Hey everyone, Samantha Yoder, the Family Life Minister here at My Near Christian Church. Happy Wednesday. Got my Cubs gear on today because they announced baseball is going to come back this summer. And I'm pretty excited about that today. So I hope you all are having a great day. Um, we are going to continue reading through our Jesus Storybook Bible today. We are starting on page 222. In those days, there were some extra super holy people, at least that's what they thought, and they were called Pharisees. Every day they would stand out there in the middle of the street and pray out loud in a big extra super holy voices. They really weren't praying so much as just showing off. They used lots of special words that were so clever, no one understood what they meant. People walking by would stop and stare, which might sound rude, except that's exactly what the extra super holy people wanted. They wanted everyone to say, look at them, they're so holy. God must love those people best. Now you and I both know they were wrong. God doesn't just love holy people, but the the people walking by weren't so sure. Perhaps you have you did have to be really clever or good or important for God to love you. Perhaps you had to know lots of difficult, clever words to speak to God. So one day, Jesus taught people how to pray. He said, when you pray, don't put, pray like those extra super holy people. They think if they say lots of words, God will hear them. But it's not because you're so clever or good or so important that God will listen to you. God listens to you because he loves you. Did you know that God is always listening to you? Did you know that God can hear the quietest whisper deep inside your heart even before you've started to say it? Because God knows exactly what you need even before you ask him, Jesus told them. You see, God just can't wait to give you all that you need. You do So you don't need to use long words or special words. You don't have to use a special voice. You just have to talk. So when you pray, pray in your normal voice, just like when you're talking to someone you love very much. Like this. Hello, Daddy. We want to know you and to be close to you. Please show us how. Make everything in the world right again and in our hearts too. Do what is best just like you do in heaven. And please do it down here too. Please give us everything we need today. Forgive us for doing wrong, for hurting people. Forgive us just as we forgive other people when they hurt us. Rescue us. We need you. We don't want to keep running away and hiding from you. Keep us safe from our enemies. You're strong, God. You can do whatever you want. You are in charge. Now and forever and for always, we think you're great. Amen. You see, Jesus was showing people that God would always love them. With a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. So they didn't need to hide anymore or be afraid or ashamed. They could stop running away from God and they could run to him instead. As a little child runs into her daddy's arms. We're going to keep going uh, today. We're going to talk a little bit about the Sermon on the Mount now. Whenever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people, sad people, and worried people. Lots of them worrying about lots of things. What if we don't have enough food or clothes or how are we, what if, or suppose we run out of money? What if there aren't? What if there isn't enough and everything goes wrong and we won't be all right? What then? When Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and he talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From, what they, from where they sat, they could see the blue lake glittering below them and little fishing boats coming in from a night's catch. The spring air was fresh and clear. See those birds over there, Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking at seeds along the stony path. Where do they get their food? 
Perhaps they have pantries all stocked up, cabinets full of food. Everyone laughed. Who's ever seen a bird with a bag of groceries? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and he feeds them. And what about these wild flowers? Everyone looked. All around them were flowers were growing. Daisies, pure white lilies. Where do you get the, their lovely clothes? Do they make them or do they have to work every day so they can buy them? Do they have closets full of food? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on a dress? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendor. Not even a king is that well dressed. They had never met a king, but as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples, and golds, they felt a great burden lift from their hearts. They could not imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than birds, more important than flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers, and he loves to look after you, too. Jesus knew that God would always love and watch over the world he had made. Everything in it, birds, flowers, trees, animals, everything. And most of all, his children. Even though God had forgotten the birds and the flowers, hadn't forgotten, they still, they still knew their song. It was the song all of God's creation had sung to him from the very beginning. It was the song people's hearts were made to sing. God made us. He loves us. He is very pleased with us. It is why Jesus had come into the world to sing them that wonderful song, to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life, so that God's children could remember it and join in and sing it too. So that's where we're going to wrap up today. Uh, on Sunday, we're going to talk about um, Jesus being the captain of the storm. And we're also going to talk about him feeding the 5,000. So make sure to come back Sunday and we'll keep reading through the life of Jesus and all the, the work that he did. Have a great Wednesday night, everyone.